Well, the Spanish civil rights group says Vancouver has at least one secret police station being operated by Chinese authorities. In our September report, Safeguard Defender says there were Chinese police operations around the world, including three in Toronto and in 48 other locations. The group says two of the new stations are in Canada, one in Vancouver, the second is unknown. And the report says that most of the newly documented stations were set up in 2016. That refutes the Chinese government statements that these operations were started in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's talk more about this right now. We're joined by CTV's public safety analyst and former OPP commissioner, Chris Lewis. Chris, good to talk to you this afternoon. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're not talking about China uh, uh, implementing Canadian laws. They're trying to implement and bring people back to China to punish them there, aren't they? That's right. And, and apparently, allegedly by some, through intimidation, through threats, through blackmail of sorts, by threatening to cause uh, bad ways of some sort for uh, relatives of uh, Chinese people living in, the, uh, in Canada, uh, back at home. And so what impacts will that have on people? And, and you know, I'm just in uh, Norway uh, working for a couple of weeks at the NATO uh, War Centre there and talking offline with a number of uh, military leaders around the world. They view China as a huge threat, the largest threat to, to world uh, peace and world security. And things like this don't help that whatsoever. And they're of grave concern to the UK, United States, Australia, Canada, and a number of other countries where this practice has started. So whether it's in Canada or any of the other countries that have been sort of named in this report, Chris, what can police do to try to crack down on these, you know, PRC police forces that are setting up illegally effectively in these other countries? I don't know all the ins and outs of the you know, various obscure laws that uh, relate to you know, dealings with other countries and some of those issues. Mm -hmm. However, the RCMP are conducting investigations into this. At the very least, there's allegations of threatening, uh, extortion, uh, you know, things of that nature, which are clearly criminal offenses in this, can in this country. At the same time, the people that are running these uh, agencies or whatever they may be came to the country telling Canada they were going to be here for either work visas and some legitimate uh, form of employment or travel. And they're obviously not doing that if they're running these so-called police stations and doing what they're doing. So there's ability to have people leave this country immediately uh, and, and a variety of things uh, from that perspective. But I don't know, as I said, the ins and outs of mm -hmm. some of the other yeah, sure. I understand that. And it's interesting, too, because this this has really bubbled up. I mean, we, we saw what happened just a couple of weeks ago when uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and China's President Xi Jinping, they had a sort of bilateral talk offline. Uh, part of that conversation was released in the readout, and Xi Jinping sort of took uh, umbrage to that. But part of that conversation was about these sort of secret police stations here. So this is going, Chris, all the way to the top. It is. And, I mean, the, the director of the FBI... Uh, Ray in the United States has made comments on this, and this just can't be. So you know all the you know the five eyes, of the intelligence agencies within those five countries uh, are all talking, and to be sharing information, looking at strategies, looking at possible outcomes of all of this. And I mean, there's diplomatic issues, obviously, but it, it just does not make it right, and it has to be stopped somewhere or another. There's no way that people here lawfully from China should have to go through this and be forced to go back to a country they don't want to go back to uh, through criminal acts of, of various sorts. But, um, but this is, I mean, a real challenge. I mean, if you're one of the people that's sort of targeted by this, Chris, when you're talking about harassment, threats, you know, intimidation, and sort of the pressure to force return, potentially maybe threatening family members who are still in China, that's difficult to sort of counter when it's all happening kind of in the dark and in the shadows. It is very much, and, and people are going to be reluctant to come forward for obvious reasons, and we totally understand that. It's somewhat reminiscent of several years ago, some organized crime figures in Eastern Bloc countries were were uh, basically blackmailing hockey players that were here in the NHL because they had family at home and, they, of course, they had lots of money. They are on big payrolls, and so they were ultimately trying to get money out of these folks and very difficult to fight because the end result may well be something that occurs in a foreign country where can the Canadian authorities have very little to say. So it's going to be really interesting to watch, and, and hopefully it dies a death at some point uh, because it's just so unfair to so many people. Yeah, we'll keep watching. Pretty murky stuff, that's for sure. At CTV's Public Safety Analyst and former OPP Commissioner Chris Lewis. Chris, good to chat. Thanks.